Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it so much. So looking forward to working on this pretty chair. I um, originally thought I've worked on similar chairs. Um, I thought this was, was black walnut at first glance, but it's maple. It's very hard maple. It's got great figure in it. Um, but we're getting ready to turn this chair over, okay? I wanted to tell you a couple things about the chair before I do so, though. And, um, in part of the decision making process and deciding on which cane, you know, I ordered cane in advance. I ordered, I ended up ordering two sizes because one, my, ori my original intention was to restore the chair exactly, but my client is going to use this chair a lot. And when I look at up here at the top, these holes, I know you can manipulate some of this. But these holes can stand to be just a hair smaller. It'll make the chair much stronger. The contract, it all, I think it'll all really come together and look nice. And um, so I think I'm gonna go with the cane. Um, and according to my chart, I can even use a fatter cane. But that, I think that would be too fat and the holes would be too small. So we're gonna go with what the chart says and kind of with what my, my eye is telling me that this could be just a little smaller, even though this is fairly common. Um, my client intends to use it a lot. So um, anyway, we're, what we'll do next is um, we're going to turn the chair over and look at the bottom and see what we're up against. Okay, so I'll stand back. And before I turn the chair over, I wanted to show you a couple things. Metal in any kind of furniture, even though it might be temporary, always comes, comes back to haunt you. The wood wants the splinter out you know, it takes the nail as a splinter, like a human, and it gets it out somehow, and it causes all kinds of issues. So anyway, just wanted to show you some of the nails and the wood just on the surface. And even right here, you can see where the wood is raised, where somebody either drove, well, I've already looked at the back, they didn't drive a dowel through it, but they came in this way, it must have, and it raised the wood up here. So, and I see all kinds of different things. But anyway, Wood and metal, it's better a lot of times, instead of screwing something, to, in, to glue a wooden dowel, drill a hole, make the hole bigger, and replace the wood that's missing with wood rather than metal. And there, therefore, the piece is uniform again and it's undamaged. So anyway, we'll see what we have. Stand by. Hi. So anyway, I have the chair turned over. And um, as you can see, there's some plywood here. Looks like a birch plywood. Um, and then he has braces here. So what I'm gonna do next is take all of this off and see what we have. Um, because, you know, in order to re weave the seat, for one, it's impossible. And two, I think we can do better than this repair. Because um, you can see it. Um, these, on the other hand, I don't know yet, but these might end up staying. Once, sometimes on a repair, once it's been taken to a certain, um, once a repair's kind of been taken to a certain point, it is what it is. These could stay. I'm going to try to do my best to make them go away, okay? And I'm going to do my best to, to rid the chair of most of its metal. And uh, we'll go from there. So uh, let me get my tools together and we'll get started. All right, thanks. Hello. Um, before I flip the chair over, I just wanted to show you a couple things. A pool noodle really works best. This is some insulating tube that I had for some pipes here in the ceiling that I just taped on there for now. I'm probably, I do have a noodle uh, upstairs I'm going to probably replace these with, but this keeps it from, uh, you know, moving, it keeps it from being a rocking chair when, when I'm actually working on this part. So let me go ahead and turn the chair over. Okay. And so underneath, we've got a piece of birch plywood. It looks brand new. These are Phillips head screws. So this is obviously a fairly recent attempt at um, keeping this chair together. This has got to go. There's a chance these might stay. I'm not sure. I don't like them. I want them to go. And then if you look closely here, you can see a lot of washers which isn't such a bad idea. I've often, and they've drilled these between the holes that the cane's going through. So, but in the wood, all the way through wood, they've put metal. That's okay, but 
I'm going to check the structural and the tightness of these screws. I might leave them because it's already done. A lot of times when I do it, I'll drill a hole and put wood back in it. And that way it's just wood. It's never anything other than wood. The grain might be reversed, but if you drill into it or do anything to it, it's, it's really irrelevant. So wood is better than metal. Metal destroys everything and the wood, it's like it's still alive. It doesn't want it there. And the classic example, when you hear, uh, sometimes you'll hear a floorboard creak. I had a very old gentleman tell me one time that it's not from wood rubbing together. You think that you're on a creaky floorboard, the floor's creaking. What it is, is the floor sliding up and down the nail. It's nail on, it's metal on the wood that causes a floorboard to squeak. Okay, so metal bad. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and start taking some of these off. Since they're Phillips head, um, I'm going to do it the untraditional way and just get them off of there and let's take a look. That one's not even doing anything. And this wood here is a um, Indonesian type wood. This is a this is not a native wood. I don't know what that is. Where that came, that came from? Pier one, some kind of piece of furniture from Pier one or something that somebody salvaged. I bet. I don't know. That's not not native. I can tell by the grain. I've seen a lot of those. Okay, so that piece is off. Okay, we'll put it aside. Let me get its partner off. Better angle here. I'm gonna use a hand screwdriver for this one. Better angle. Okay, a couple more and we're there. So anyway, his, his or her attempt, you know, was in good faith, but in my opinion, there's just a better way to do it. And this chair might not have been back then to them what it is today. I don't know how much time has gone by, but um, so let's take the piece of plywood off. This is birch plywood. It's good cabinet grade plywood. And then he painted it black and he used a spray. There's no brush marks. And uh, so that gave the appearance of looking through the seat. But now let's put this aside. Now looking at the seat, there are a couple things that I want to show you. Okay, one, we already talked about these washers here. But then there's also a break here, okay? Um, these have to be tightened. These nuts, the arms are a little loose. Always scary when you tighten something that's been fixed like that for a long time, because if that breaks, big trouble. Not, that'd be a hard one to replace real easily. I mean, we, we could get it, I can get it done, but I don't want those to break. So I might put some lubricant in that um, today and let it sit so it's kind of prepping itself for the moment of truth when I tighten it. Um, other than that, I think what we'll do next is I'm going to flip it back over. I'll get the tools out and um, we're going to get it ready to, uh, to remove the cane portion of just the seat. We're going to do it one step at a time, but I'm real curious about the seat. I want to make the repair. I'm going to take all the cane off the whole thing eventually but I wanna see what I'm up against with this seat. This is the main repair. I think the repairs on the side of this chair are gonna be fairly easy. Um, I don't foresee any major issues. They look like they were nailed on. I might replace those little nails with the same diameter brass screw. Um, but so next, what we'll do is we're, I'm gonna flip the chair back over get my appropriate tools and we'll take the seat off and then we'll really 
look at the wood and what we got to do to make this thing work. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Hey, I've got the seat back upright again. Uh, I've got my trusty exacta knife. I'm sure there's a bunch of different ways of doing this. I like to go around um, and I cut each of these. This is the binder cane, okay? Everywhere there's a double coming down, there's a hole, okay? And these loops hold this decorative piece. After you weave the chair, there's seven steps to doing it, and we'll review that in a future episode. Um, you then cover all the holes which are drilled in the wood with a binder cane. But you can see this the last weaver skipped a hole just to save time. It doesn't look horrible, but we're you know we're gonna put one every hole. And um, uh, there's another trick I just learned uh, from a gentleman, and we're gonna talk about his trick and um, how inspirational he's been he's been in his work. So. Um, but I've already gone around and I've cut all of these loops with an X-Acto knife, right? I've got a few left and, you know, this is done. So, I, I mean, you can literally just cut it, um, get them out of the way. And then we're going to lift it off and we'll be one step closer. Got a couple more. Let's see what happens. And some will require a little more monkeying around, but let's see what we get. So this is coming off okay. And I photographed this chair meticulously, so I know how the last weaver wove it. Um, back up here, this detail here, before I take off this last piece of binder cane, there are different schools, but one of the old schools and the way a gentleman I used to work for was taught is like when this strand here is coming across, you always go into the closest hole. That school, I think, kind of changed over time. And now you go under to, the far, to a hole farther than the closest hole. And it creates these X's. And it gives the chair, one, more strength. And two, it looks cool. It looks like stitches. So I'm going to definitely have X's is my goal all the way around the perimeter of the whole chair. And that's, that's really the best weave. And I'm glad to see that, that that decision wasn't, wasn't made back here. That's going to make, make me feel better because I do want to remain true to the chair's original, uh, you know, integrity. But at the same time, I want it to be correct for future generations and for the next person, hopefully, that reweaves a chair, this chair will, will have a chance um, to be rewoven and the next uh, person that does it will be impressed by our work. And that's what I care about the most. And that the chair will last because it's in such good shape. We can fix this. Um, so anyway, I've got, got it off the top. Look at this. Look at this situation here, you know, and when I talked to the client, it was about re, re, re weave, excuse me, re weaving this chair only. Um, it's got some significant repairs. I'm lucky to have this chair and I'm just going to handle that and uh, move forward so I can take care of this. I've run into these situations a lot, but let me get the, I'm going to pause the camera for a minute and uh, let me get the rest of the seat out and some of this detail stuff out of our way. And um, then we'll flip it over and we'll get the rest of the cane out and we'll look closely at this break and I'll show you what I've done to repair them in the past and what I think will work best in this situation. But it's got about an eight, 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 eighth of an inch gap all the way down it, even with the screws in it. But I've got a good idea on, on how we're going to repair this and make it disappear. So anyway, stand by. Thank you. Okay, so I've cut the, you know, the binder cane off. I've got all that. Um, I've now cut just the seat out. And I always keep these. Got a big pile. Um, and all of this material, you know, doesn't want to come out because, you know, this came out. But this is held in by the bottom. So let's turn. So what I'm, I'm going to press pause here and again in a minute. And I'm going to clean. I'm going to show you how I do it. And then I'm going to clean it up. Uh, so as not to bore you and we'll continue on. So let me turn the chair over. Also, before I do so, 
in the corner, this one's missing it. But there's usually a um, a dowel or a pin of some sort holding it together, and sometimes you have to drill it out. When I have to drill those out, I always like to make all my repairs before I uh, before I do anything. I want the chair to be solid, right, and you know to be functioning exactly as it should without you know weaving anything we're going to take it back to what we we think is its best state but if you look real closely when i drill these out you, this one's just handmade it's not even round usually they're a round dowel my trick is i will just eyeball and take an awl and put it right in the center of that dowel and there therefore when i take my drill bit and drill down through it, I'm gonna drill once with a tiny bit in that hole, okay? And then increase the size of the drill bit until the material is removed. Always keeping an eye not to make that hole bigger and bigger and bigger. You don't, you, you definitely don't wanna uh, remove anything but the wood that was inserted, okay? So let me pause for a second. I'm gonna turn the chair over and we're gonna look at how best to cut out the underneath part to get it clean. Okay, so I've got the seat turned back over. You know, this is why so much won't come off. There's a lot of material up through these holes and it binds in there. Um, some holes have more strands going through them than others at times uh, because of the weave. And you'll, you'll learn more about that as we, we do the weaving process. But in order to um, get these off, I just take a bigger utility knife and I'll just cut these away one at a time. So. I'm gonna do that and disappear for a minute and I'll be right back. I'll go around and we'll look at a clean chair. Hey, um, before I vacuum, don't. See that pile? All it will is do is clog up your vacuum. Get rid of it. Get all the big stuff you can up by hand. Um, I just put this blanket down a few months ago and haven't glued anything on it. It's very smooth. So let me clean this up real quick and we'll share your back up here and I'll show you what we got. this looks pretty uh let's go around the chair we're going to start over here okay so the first thing that probably happened in this chair's life the first thing i want to comment on is we don't know if this is the original weaving um not i don't see how it could have lasted that long but nothing when i took this off made me think of or saw any any kind of differences or anything that made it look like somebody else may have woven it since its original weaving. I, it's beyond me. It's so old, but it's pretty thick cane and it's strong. Once it's in a, you know, on its own, it's not that strong, but when it's woven, you know, there's strength in numbers and that weave really, I mean, you can stand on it to a good degree if you had to, but it would eventually fail. But um, let me show you the main issues with this chair. Okay, we'll start here. Um, somebody initially drove nails in it. This got loose, okay? And this is before glues and ability to inject uh, glues with syringes and all, all these kind of things. You know, they had serious disadvantages, much less finding glues other than animal glues. And those are what I still use. Um, this, all this right here is hide glue. Whoever made this repair with these that has Phillips head screws used some glue. Actually, it looks like this person used no glue. He just tried to screw it back together and it didn't work. This is old hide glue drips from when the chair was made, you know, because that was the only glue available. This orange, orange is glue. This is hide glue and it's water soluble. But, um, so this is our main issue to fix. And let me show you what it looks like from the top. It's a little easier to see. Okay, right here. Okay, okay. we've seen what they did here. They start with nails when it gets loose. See, see how loose that is? We're gonna repair this, okay, without disassembling the chair 
I'm going to think about it, okay? But what I think I'm going to do is probably insert a dowel somehow, okay, to, to make that joint bomb-proof. And these nails, I might drive in further and put a little black wax over them, okay? Not sure yet. I always think about it before I do anything, if I have anything in question. Okay, this joint is loose, right? Okay, obviously don't want to put in a dowel from the back, that would be unsightly, but one not, and then there's something here that's causing this crown. I don't know if you can see this crown, but that, you know, what's done is done there, unless, I, unless when we turn it over, we find something we can take out, but that will require disassembly of the chair. The chair is too old for that, in my opinion. We're gonna continue forward. I think the fix here would be to put in a dowel at an angle here and have it come through here and recapture, and this will be just wicked strong, okay? And then we'll come over to here. I haven't removed these yet. I'll show you that in a future episode, okay? But this is the main break, okay? And this is the one done with Phillips screws and washers. The person that did this was thinking totally on the right track, but something happened where the pressure, you know, this, you can see this piece is lower now than this piece. And downward pressure is only, I mean, it's downward pressure. So it's not above it, it's below it. So over time, and there's no evidence of glue in here. Today's glues, I use mostly animal glues because when you, when a piece of furniture fails, like a table, you want it to fail at the joint because it can be repaired. If the glue is always stronger than the wood in every case, it can break anywhere. And if it breaks cross grain, you know, in the middle of nowhere in a chair, they often go to the burn pile because they can't be fixed. But if it comes loose here, 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 it's a joint, okay? So um, makes a huge difference. So what I think he could, he could look, he or she literally could have glued this with a yellow glue and it would have held without, without even the backups. You could get away with it. I always put in a dowel or maybe a trim screw, depending on the chair. If it's a modern chair, sometimes I'll use a trim screw but I prefer, I prefer all wood back in, back in the chair. Okay, so what we're gonna do, and we'll do this in the next episode, is the main thing to do, that, to do now is to fix this one, okay? We'll think about these little bothersome things. They don't have to be attacked right now, okay? And I'm gonna think about the best way to, this is, isn't super loose, but it's not perfect, okay? And then, um, we will uh, attack this one, okay? And what I'm gonna do is unscrew, I'm taking this off, okay? And then we're gonna put it back. We're gonna clean all the debris out of this, okay? And then we're gonna put this back and we are gonna clamp it and glue it with yellow glue this time, okay? In this instance, the glue can be as strong as the wood or stronger, okay? If it's hide glue, you know, it usually fails at the joint. We don't want this to fail ever. Okay, antiques are around today because of hide glue, in my opinion, is because they would fail at the joints and anybody could repair it. You get a break across here, you know, you have issues even clamping it. So hide glue is a great thing. I use it for everything. Um, it's water soluble, you can reverse it, but it, it, it will fail just before the wood will. Yellow glue is the key for this. So what we'll do um, in the next episode, we're gonna have we're gonna take this piece off, we're gonna get it back level, we're gonna glue it on, clean up the residue, and then we'll take a look and see what we have from there. We'll go from there. All right, thanks.